حال به معرفی مختصری از سخنران دانشمند امشب خانم دکتر فریده کیومه میپذیرم. Now I will briefly introduce our eminent speaker of the night. Dr. Faideh Kiyomeh Datsetan is the founder and CEO of the International Health and Epidemiology Research Center, IHERC, a non-profit organization established in 1994, dedicated to the research and prevention of epidemic diseases. As part of the mission, she established the innovative anti-violence campaign for peace project that identifies the violence as a preventable social epidemic disease. Dr. Kumer received her Doctor of Veterinary Medicine from the University of Tehran. She continued her education at the University of Michigan School of Public Health, earning her master's and doctorate degree in the field of epidemiology. She has served as the, the director of the health planning division at the plan and budget organization. She has taught in medical school at Meli University Schools of Public Health in Tehran University at Tehran University and other schools internationally. She has authored numerous scientific papers and book chapters, has been an invited guest speaker in many academic settings as well as many television and radio programs, both domestically and abroad. Dr. Kumer has received numerous awards, including the very first Peace Award from the American Public Health Association, APHA, has received distinctions from President Clinton, Vice President Al Gore, Senators Diane Feinstein and Barbara Boxer, LAUSD, uh, Board of Education, and others. IHERC received the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize as a member organization affiliate of International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, ICAN. Dr. Kumer advocates for non-violence, a world without gun, without violence without nuclear weapons and without war. You know that this is a very, very, very important issue. You remember that in 1999, uh, uh, somebody you know, shot a lot of people in Buckhead, Buckhead, you know, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, and among them, there was one Iranian. So Dr. Kumer, we welcome you to Puya, and we are honored to have you to, tonight as an eminent professor, as an eminent scholar, as somebody who has worked on a vital issue. Thank you so much on behalf of Puya and also Kanun Farhangi Iranian Atlanta and myself. You know, we welcome you and I thank you for spending your two hours tonight with us. Thank you, Dr. Kumer. Would you please start? Okay. Um... Thank you, in general, Puya, professional organization of Iranian American, and especially Dr. Varzegar and also Dr. Gamistani for trying to help with the slide uh, presentation. And more than anything, I'm appreciative to you all to come and spend your time. You know, I know that everybody has not enough time and trying to you know, spend with us. So I appreciate that a lot. The topic of our uh, project today or presentation today is stop the gun violence wow. epidemic. And I guess everybody who lives, especially in this country, is very well aware of what we are going to talk about. I personally am terrified in recent days and weeks, which have been terrified for many years, but last few weeks have been really tremendous. And I feel very, stress and under lots of you know pressure for seeing all these innocent people especially innocent children being slaughtered in a way in the u.s and although we're trying to do something but really nobody's doing anything 
So that is bothering me. And I'm sure when I talk to anybody else on the phone, they all say the same thing, that they are on the edge. They are you know, shaky. They are really upset. So today I'm trying to talk about you know, three parts. My talk would be in three parts. First part would be very brief history about US and it was built on and especially the gun culture. And the second new part of our discussion would be about statistics and showing you the different statistics with gun violence and also comparison with different countries in the world, which were one of the worst or the worst. And the third part of our program is to, to share with you the ways that we can end gun violence and especially with the holistic approach. And one of them would be changing the gun violence culture, which we have been doing for since 1994, plus other issues that we have to discuss with you know, gun control and laws that we have to check. So with your permission, we can start the uh, slide presentation. Before I start talking, I would like, to, I would like you to see uh, one video which a journalist have created for us. And this shows you our project anti-violence campaign for peace, which is ongoing project of IHERC, our organization. So I thought I'd share that with you and then i continue. Thank you. Hello. I would like- In, This is the topic we talked about, stop the gun violence, ending the gun violence through holistic approach, we have, which I'm going to talk to you. Next, please. Gun violence has been prevalent throughout US history from the beginning at the very beginning or the foundation of this country. And the way this country was built on was on war, on violence and guns. As an example, the Native American, when the first, after Columbus, then when the first European, white European came to this country, they started having over at least 1,500 wars with Native American, and they is larger than millions of Native American were killed, and because you know they had guns and the others didn't, so that caused the you know the importance of guns being seen by, the, by all these people, seeing that because of the gun they won, and then the carbon mentality started following that because when Native American were killed and then the, not only the actual killing, but also the movies, which was made after that, as you all have seen, I'm sure that the cowboy movies were all over. Uh, we have seen it, everybody has seen it. And at the beginning, even I, as a person, which I was watching that cowboy movie, we thought it was the fault of the, you know, Native American, they are doing something wrong, or they want the war, the one who are violent. Whereas when, if they didn't talk, they didn't talk about history, if they really talked about history in the real way, we would not see that, that, you know, cowboys were innocent people living in this country and they, the land were their lands and this happened. As you must know that Native American, even as we speak after so many years, still some of them are in the reservoirs and in a very, very bad situation in a, you know, sometimes they compare with the concentration camps. So all the wars that they have done with Native American in the past, then when that finished, civil wars was for many years all over U US. So that war was also giving people, you know, the power with the gun. They want each state which have more guns, they will win more. So the love for gun and, you know, whatever they gain from it, the lands, the finances, uh, becoming more wealthy, they all come from that. Then the next, I, I have to go very briefly because we don't have time, otherwise we can discuss that. And slavery came after that when all these poor black African were brought to US and they were slaves for the white people, which eventually this slavery 
become the race, the racism which we have in this country started with that. Although we have historians which talk about it differently. They say, no, it was first the racism and this is slavery come from that or slavery was first. So which is not in, we cannot talk about it in this short time. As one example for that racism that you all are aware of with George Floyd, everybody even in the world know about George Floyd, what happened, he couldn't breathe and all these uh, police officer put their you know, feet with, with big shoes on their neck. And he was saying, I can't read, I can't read. And that was something that got everybody on the edge. So after that, the constitution in this country is another reason for what, what is happening here. As I mentioned, because of all this war, all this violence in this country and the very short period of time that we have, US, America is not, made America more than 250 years. It's not even 250 years, uh, you know, so it's very young country. So being so young and having all these wars, that's all the kids brought up in this country. What they learned was war and war and war. And then of course the continuation of this war, which was with other countries from Iraq, from Vietnam to Afghanistan, you name it. This thing and all this um, thing that I mentioned make the culture of gun culture very strong in this country because it was glamorized even in their, in their movies, you see a lot of glamorization of whoever have a gun. And that's why I believe strongly American, American culture have very strong and very tight relationship with gun ownership. They have learned that because of what happened their, you know, the fathers and their founding fathers. So in a way I said they have a love affair. It's that connection is so much that is kind of love affair that they have with, with their guns. I give you one example here that a father a few years ago in, I believe it was in um, Idaho, bought a gun, which is real gun, real gun for his five year old kid, boy. And the name of that gun was my first rifle. Give it to the son. And the son next year, when it was her sister's uh, three-year-old girl, sister, they were playing and the boy shoot and killed his three-year-old woman, girl, his sister. And the ironic and the worst part of it is that this father came to the TV and very openly, very strongly and very happily said, okay, now my baby is killed, but you know, gun is not a problem. That was not Don's fault. So I just wanted to show you how love affair is with these people that even they would prefer their guns to their kids. Next, please. Then we come to our second amendment. And I really want you to pay attention to this. Second amendment is very short thing. It's about 27 words only. And in that it said the well regulated militia can have their arm. Look, we don't have anybody here in this country now to be called militia to be even well-regulated militia. At those times they had that militias talking about arm, state armies and they wanted to fight each other to win. And at this time we don't have that kind of thing. So unfortunately the second amendment from the beginning to now is constantly misinterpreted. So we have to really know that. And I want you to all know that. So if somebody argue with you, you just tell them that's not true. And I said, even if it was true, even, even if that law or amendment was right, I would say, which one is more important? Freedom to live for us, for our kids, or the freedom to bear arms? In the 1900s, more than 19, nine, nine countries had the right to bear arms. But as, as we speak, or in 2021, we had only three countries which have the right to bear army. Next please, which is US and it would be Mexico and Guatemala. To prove my point, we find this specific uh, Supreme Court justice named Baron Berger, which he, he also said the same thing exactly what we were saying and said the gun lobby's interpretation of the second amendment is one of the greatest piece of fraud. I repeat the word fraud. 
on the American people or special interest groups that I have ever seen in my lifetime. So here we go as a proof, as a, somebody which is, next please, uh, you know, Supreme Justice. I give you this slide for the you know, gun violence and number of people killed in that year because it was one of the worst after 20 years. So it says it was the worst uh, you know, gun violence from the 1900, 1990 something. The number of people who killed, but I don't know if you, I should have asked you this before I showed you this slide. Can you imagine that 45,222 people die by gun in this country every year? I, when I asked before other people, what do you think, how many people do you think when we talk about gun violence in this country? They said 1,000, 2,000, 45,222. Just think about it. That means like every day we have 120 people, 124 people loses them, losing their life to the gun. And that means every 10 minutes, like we have been here less than more than 10 minutes, more than one person have been losing their life because of gun. And then from these 45,122, 19,334 is homicide, by homicide, and 24,000. 292 is with uh, suicide. And of course, the rest is unintentional, which we can discuss later. In 2020, two things was get, getting worse. One of them was domestic violence, because in domestic violence, especially in this country, when uh, they are having any argument at home, when they have gun at home, what they do, go grab the you know, gun and shoot their normally wives or partner wives. <laughs> or their friends or whatever. So that was really jumped up in that year. And the mass shooting as well, because people were, next please, because people were on, under so much stress and under so much economic issue with the COVID and all these things. So that was really big, big day too. Now I would like to please pay attention to this. Gun right now is number one killers in kids in US, in America, the children one, to 19. And these guns is killing. And you know, it's more killer than cancers, than you know, flu, than asthma, whatever children would get. This has been the worst killer that many diseases combine in this country. And usually for a few many years, car was number one killer for kids in, in the not Los Angeles, America, one to nineteen for many years, but last three years, these have been shifted. Now we have more young people, children and uh, teens being killed by gun than by car. As you see here, 4,368, including 2,811 homicide and suicide by 1,933. Whereas by car, it was less than 4,000. Not 4,000 is not, too much, but I'm saying that even surpassing the you know, car accidents. Another thing I wanna mention that unfortunately the racial disparity is very important to you know, talk about. Black children are four times more likely to die from gun inflicted injury than the white. Next please. This is the number of shootings that we have had in schools in since 2013, 2012 was the time that we had that big shooting in Sandy Hook, which 23 young poor kids were dying, died because of the gun violence. And 933 shootings that we had, at least was 317 dead along with it. Now, where we are at this slide, I would like to discuss a little bit more about school shootings that we had very recently, you well done. The, the, the other shooting, as you know, 19 innocent children, 10 and 11 years old, fourth graders were died, and then two teachers. The, when we talk about 19 or we say how many people is dead, we have to bear in mind that it's not only the number of people who killed, how many injured, but then it comes to the effect of this shooting and killing on them for the rest of their life especially in the kids when we are talking. There were a few testimonies yesterday 
and few a teacher, a pediatrician, and also a um, young girl, 11 year old, testified about what happened in Uvalde. And you cannot really sit and listen to all these things. Very short, I, because I have so much to do, but I need to talk about that. The pediatrician was saying, when he went to the room to do surgery over these you know, kids who have been shot, he said, I couldn't even recognize that they, they were so much holding their body, we couldn't recognize which kid is that. And we could only find out who they are through their you know, bloody shirts. And he said they put some kids on the table, which they were already dead. And then this teacher was saying that he saw few of her children die right in front of his eyes. And this young uh, student, which was only 11 years old, the way she talks about what happened, what she saw, it is really, I don't know, heart French. I cannot really think about it. She was saying, that she saw this gunman come in, an 18 years old boy, come in with a semi-automatics and start first shoot the teacher on the head, on the head, and he said the teacher fell, and then he starts shooting randomly, this in, student in a class. Then he said, I grabbed a, you know, some backpack and hide behind it, and he shoot the, the guy, the friend of mine right standing by me. When he shoot that, he said, I pretend that I'm dead. I got some of the blood from my classmate put all over my body that, that you know, shooters feel that I'm dead. You just think about you know, the life of this woman. This girl is, did not die, but this child is going to grow up with a big traumatization. She's going to not having a real life. He's not going to live really in the potential life he, she had. Because she would remember, how could you see that your teacher being shot that way, your friends like that, and you see all these horrors. So we have to discuss also that very strongly. We cannot do it in this time because we don't have time. But this is something that's very important. The number of mass shooting is increasing, unfortunately. And if you see here from 2018, from 323, then next year was 417, then 2020,000 become uh, 500 uh, passes, uh, 610, then we had 2021, 693, and 2022 so far, it says 239, but this is now 289, uh, 49, and the reason is this was done only last week. We just updated, updated, and this is something we cannot really, next please, we cannot really go, uh, you know, fix it because it's just happening every day, every single day. We had two, as a matter of fact, we had in the last weekend, which was Memorial Day, it was 13 mass shooting. And then last weekend was another 11 mass shooting. So you can imagine what's going on. And I hope I don't forget to tell you after after matter of this thing, what <clears> happened. <throat> uh, some good laws is passing, but it's just like a baby a step to me. This is a statistic for 2021 last year as a glance. We said 20, how many people died in this country in 2020? And now even 6% more or many cities, major US cities saw an increase in homicide from 2020. So it's even increasing now, as we see. Then we say um, 38.9 million guns sold. This is by FBI, uh, you know, the background check. So the number of guns sold in 2021, at least was 18 million. We are talking about million. And now we're going to talk to you about how many guns we have in people's hand already. And then in one year, we have so many more guns sold. And then again, in the left-hand side, lower part, you say 11 states allowing the children or the student to campus carry. They, they can, okay. they are allowed in 11 states, the states allow the and, you know, people to go to the schools while they are carrying a gun. Oh and in the right hand side also is a minimum age. There is minimum age usually for um, if they can buy a handgun or can buy a, you know, shotgun or semi-automatic. The shotgun is 
18 years old, which we're trying to change, and the other one is 21 year old. Next, please. Okay, this one again, you know, as we see, more than half of the major US cities have seen projected that we would have the you know, increase in gun sales. So we next year or this year, we're going to have more guns sold and people have more guns. And then in the lower part, it said 22 states allow you to carry a handgun Why, without a license. See, when we go buy a car, when we are going to drive a car, they always yeah. want you to have license. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use an instrument which is only made for killing and because of all these mass shooting and shootings we have here, why they shouldn't have license? Okay, have your guns, why, why we shouldn't have license? Next, please. This one showing you the number of deaths by gun so far, so far to June. Actually it was the June 7, I believe, the 4th, June 4th. <laughs> we have lost more than 18,000 people's lives innocent life, children, and everybody else so far in this country. Next, please. This one is very important to see. You are saying that most the states who have weak gun laws, they usually have more gun shootings and more deaths. And this is one example, for instance, where we just got these two, say the firearm homicide race in USA by states in 2019. Now it's getting much worse. Now it's better, worse than that. The District of Columbia, which is a state, of course not the state, but had the highest number. The red line that you see is USA. I mean, America as a general, which is 4.12 per 100,000. But I think your state, yeah. the state that you are, I believe is in Georgia. That is number eight, is one of the worst states as far as gun violence. And our, the place I am right now in, and live is California. It's like much lower in this place that we see. So when they are talking about gun violence and gun deaths, they are not all the same in different states would be a little different depending to when, what their gun laws are. Next, please. This one, we, we had the comparison, firearm homicide rate in the US comparing with uh, high income countries. As you see, the first one, the very beginning one is US. Can you see the different, the huge difference between that and other countries in this chart? It's hard to read some of them, but I can tell you, Canada, we supposed to have one of the most number of guns after US, in high income countries, US has eight times more than what we have, you know, the race is five times more than Canada. It is 50 times, five zero times more than Germany. It is hundred times more than United Kingdom. And it's more than 200 times in the bottom is Japan. We have more than 200 times more than Japan or South Korea. Just look at this and we have to be shaky and say what is going on in our country? Why other countries don't have that? Next, please. And this is about gun ownership. The gun ownership is one of the worst thing that and if anytime I wanna talk about, I feel more unhappy because the red long one again is the number of, remember that this is the number of owner gun ownership in the United States and is a number of privacy, privately owned gun. This is not including army or other thing. This is what people have in their hand. As you see, it's more than 400 million. That was in 2019 or 20, but we upgraded. That means right now we have more than 420 million. So that means that translate to each hundred people in this country have about 127 guns. Or we can say each person have, a, have more than 12 guns, including children, if we you know, all had equally the same amount, number of guns. But the next one, as you see, the next one is Canada. Canada have only 
comparatively, that 400 million have only 12 million, or in United Kingdom, you have only 4 million. So why US is so much in love with guns? That's why we told you a little bit about it. Next, next please. Now we are saying, how does epidemiology, I'm an epidemiologist, and we say, how does epidemiology play a role in gun violence prevention, you might ask. And that's why, because epidemiology actually is a science of learning or knowing about diseases, research to find causes, and then find a ways to prevent it. So there is three kind of uh, you know, diseases. We have acute diseases, epidemic diseases, we have chronic, and we have the social epidemic diseases. As a matter of fact, my doctorate thesis in Michigan was not any of these, it was an influenza, it was flu. And of course, when I came, when I you know, came to California and at that time in 1994, guns were number one killers in kids in California. So I decided, okay, what is more important is killing more than influenza. So I decided to do that. And for you, as you know, infectious is like COVID, like flu, and chronic is just like the cancer, diabetes. And we decided, and we called since then, we said violence is a disease. So we are looking at it as a disease and a social epidemic disease and very deadly one. Next, please. As I mentioned, violence is a disease and it is contagious. As violence is contagious, as kindness is contagious. War is contagious, as peace is contagious, and hate is contagious as love. And we all believe in that. Next, please. Now, I would like to emphasize, because of all we said, all we said, all these people being killed by gun, it is not, gun violence is not a political issue. It is rather a public health issue. And I guess we understand why I'm saying that. It used to be the criminal justice system issue in the US. It has killed more Americans than many wars, all the wars in the American history, right? In, since 2000, since 2000, which now is 22, since 2000, more than 600,000 civilians, I can give you an exact number, but just more than six and more than half a million people have lost their lives in this country, innocent men, women, and children. And we are not in war inside. We have war with other countries, but we don't have war in this country. As example, in Vietnam War, which took about eight years and is very infamous in the world, we had 58,000 soldiers killed. And look at that 600,000 people, or look at that number I give you, 45,222 in one year. That alone is like one and a half year in this country, more people died than eight years in Vietnam, soldier, soldiers in Vietnam in eight years. The same thing, Iraq war was 4,400 soldiers killed within the first seven years. Now, when I'm saying that, I want you to understand, I'm not saying that nobody else killed in Vietnam and other places because millions and millions of people died in Vietnam, in Iraq, but I'm talking about civilian in the US. Next, please. And as we said again before, violence breeds violence, act of violence committed injustice, even when we act of violence as even affirmation of right or you know, committed of justice, still is not good. We are believing in nonviolence and sticking with nonviolence rather than violence. Next, please. Okay, because of all these things we discussed, we believe strongly that we have all been desensitized. We have been numb to the matter of violence and gun violence in this country. And the reasons are all around it. It says violence all around us. As you all know, who lives in US and even people who don't live in US, they have heard about it. And as you see, we are not safe in the streets, our home in place of 
uh, worship, they are not have, in nursing, in nursing homes, in concerts, no, in even hospitals, not in schools, even the hospital, as you know, a few days ago in Tulsa, somebody is mad, goes, kill the teacher, I mean, uh, kill the uh, doctor. And usually when we have this episode, NRA, which we talk about it later in, in more detail, would come in and said, okay, now when we have the school shootings, they immediately said, no, we have to arm teacher. Now, when we have in the hospitals, I don't know what they're going to say. Now, we have to arm doctors and nurses. But anyway, you're well familiar with that. In the lower part, in, in the left, it says availability. Another the big problem in the US is availability and accessibility. Because as we mentioned, we had more than uh, 400 million guns in people's hands, so very available and also accessible. They are all, unfortunately, all over. They are not put in one place and locked up. And so these two are the main issue why we have the gun violence epidemic and the rest would contribute to that. Then war, as you see, we have had war since, I remember, I've been here since 1968. And we have had war in this country, not inside, but with other countries. So always they have been talking about war in the media and in TV and poor kids are watching that every single day. At the beginning when I came to US, I remember when I was watching uh, television and I saw that you know somebody killed somebody, I would just leave the room and don't come back till everything finished. Honestly, after a while passed and I said, you know, one day was not as much shooting and killing. I was so desensitized. I said, oh, today was not any killing, huh? So I'm saying even people like me, which I'm against violence, against gun, I was craving that. I was watching, to, wanted to see what happened. So we become desensitized. Then it goes to the glamorization of uh, you know, violence and guns in our TV, in media, in movie theaters, things like that, as you're all familiar with that. They have glamorized, glamorizing uh, gun in movies and always the big person or the powerful person or you know, people with rich pe people or become rich because of the, you know, getting more money using the gun. And unfortunately, nobody is talking about that, saying that, you know, you don't have to put all these guns. And of course, NRA and gun lobbies push them and pay them money to put more guns in their, you know, movies. So we have to all be alert and be, you know, fighting them back for that. And then we go back to children plaything and, you know, which is under here, probably you don't see it. Children plaything is very important. We are talking children plaything like a toy gun and like a video violence, video games. And that we have, uh, for toy guns, we're going to discuss more in detail, but I'm always wondering, when we give toy gun to our kids, what do we really mean? What do we have in mind? We just give, give a toy gun to a two, three, four years old boy, normally boys, and they say, okay, honey, go kill or shoot your brother or your friend. And you say, bravo, you are the winner. I always was wondering, when we do that, when the parents do that, what do we are, what we are thinking in their mind? What are their purpose? What is the importance of that? Now, now with the violence video game, I feel that violence video games are not only, you know, it's worse than movie movies that kids see and more than, you know, toy gun. The reason is that they are the actor in that, you know, doing the violence video games. I tell you two um, small things, hopefully we have time to finish up. It is, Something is called sub subliminal message. I don't know if you have seen that or not. Uh, you have heard that or not. It's a very few oh. seconds of a message which is you know, put in a video or something. There, there is a study that they got two sets, different students or children, the same number, and then they send them to different movie theater and in the same uh, film, the same thing, but they put in one of them one subliminal message which is not seen by the naked eyes, only the brain catches it. And then they put another, you know, nothing in the other movie theater. And that message was a little dummy that a person would come and kick that in one side 
and disco. So when the movie finished and these two group came out, they put dummy in front of these two movie theaters. And it was really interesting to find out, not all of them, but few of these students came and kicked that, you know, dummy the same way that, you know, they saw it, supposedly saw in the movie. And the other group did not even pay attention to that. And there's another study in JAMA, Journal American Medical Association, in 2019, I believe. And it was some study between, uh, they got three groups of students and give them, they, then they divided those to two. The first group were given the violence video game is very, you know, nice and not violent. The other group got uh, video games, which there uh, was having some sword playing in it. And the third one were the one who, uh, the groups who had uh, gun in it. And then they divide all these things, all these three groups to two groups. And one of them were act actors, the other one observers. And when this few hours of action finished, they take them all in one room and it was window in that room. So the parents and others could see inside. They put lots of different toys in that room. And then in one of the rooms, I mean, one of the cabinets, they put a gun, which was of course, you know, uh, without bullets. And they let the kids play there. So the thing is that one, uh, they, they, they saw that, that the kids who were playing just a normal video game, they just pass and start playing with the toys was there. The group, second group with sword, they just maybe look at the gun, but they didn't really touch it. The third group, group which had played with that video game, which had gun in it, they opened that drawer open it and start playing with it either it even starts shooting mm -hmm. and the more the actors even they were the actors were even more aggressive than the, those which are observers next please so now by saying all these things i want to say we have been desensitized now we need to be sensitized again oh two two more thing i i can mention it here and also we had two more thing about children uh, movies that unfortunately, even those which doesn't have gun in it, there is a lot of violence in it, like Home Alone, like somebody, a uh, thief goes to a home and then he fell down from the top of the building and somebody threw a, a you know, brick and the man almost dies, but he stand up and the kids laugh. Or the, the, the cartoons we have, like Tom and Jerry, that you all know what that is. Okay, the next slide, which is this one, we please consider, no, 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 no before, yeah. Consider these facts. We say violence is a learned behavior. Nobody is born. Nobody is born mm -hmm. violent. Nobody come out of the mommy's tummy with, you know, guns or yeah. sword or anything. So we all are very innocent when we are born. We learn being violent from at the beginning from our home environment. Then we can learn from school by being bullied and we can learn in our society. So it's very important to know that. And knowing another thing is values and behaviors learned during childhood have the last, most lasting effect throughout our adult life. And this is given. Whatever you learn from the childhood, even sometimes you wanted to get it away from you, you can't because it's in your cell, it's in your DNA. And also we say, this is a fact, guns are not toys, right? And we say, this is what we always say in our PSA and to people when we are talking to them and in our presentation, guns are for killing and toys are for playing. Combination of these two are deadly. Next, next please. And then I was, when I was going to talk about toy gun and you know working with kids about toy gun, I looked at the dictionary and I said, what is the meaning of gun? It's instrument used to kill. And then I look for toy, it said toy is a child's plaything. Then I put the toy gun together and I couldn't really find a nice meaning for that. What we sh should call that a instrument of killing, which is fun for people to kids to play with. Does it make sense to you? Next, please. Now, how are we aiming now to change the culture around violence? We have this anti-violence campaign for peace, which is the, you know, we are doing it every single day of year, you know, and it's 
uh, our main goal of this uh, project and our organization. We, two things very important here in our project. One is to reach the kids, the basis or root of the uh, problem. We should start with their children, the younger, the better. So we do that by influencing ch children learn responses at an early age, the, the younger, the better. So sometimes we even go talk to the pregnant women because the babies are not born yet. So they learn, so they would be teaching them as soon as the baby is born it, and by education and raising awareness. So our most important thing and the way we are doing it through education and raising awareness and especially our emphasis in our children, the younger, the better. Aim to address the influential factors to, that glorifies gun violence and violence in general and provide context around the negative consequences of them. Next, please. We said, how can parents help? Parents can help very easy. There is, talk to your children. Always be their friend as far as when they say something, listen to them. Never buy them toy gun, toy weapon, anything, any video games or anything to teach, teach them violence. Teach them equality. Teach them that everybody is the same. We are not better than somebody else. Nobody is better than us. These are very important for them to learn. Next, please. And also, we should tell them, next, please. This is what we mentioned, give your kids instrument. So we emphasize, give your kids instrument of construction and life, not those of destruction and death. Next page. And even a book, like a book, like a, you know, instrument that pe people can do exercise. They are something that's very important and very nice for them. And it's, they, they play and then they do exercise and reading the book, give them, you know, good mind. And so we say, raise your kids also peaceful. This is important in addition to give them love teach them respect for the, themselves and others, equality, justice. This is important for me, and I tell all the parents which I talk to, teach your kids to embrace differences, not only tolerate it. Why is it important? Because when we tolerate something or we tell the kids, okay, tolerate this, this boy is black, but that's, that's okay, just play with him. You know, he would go soon. Instead of saying, embrace it, love it, love these differences. I believe differences are the most important thing in your life. It's so beautiful when we have so many different colors of flowers, when we have so many different faces, when we see different hairs, colors, all these things. So embrace them. Next, please. So the purpose of all we are doing is to create a culture of peace to help impact behaviors in our children. By ad addressing these issues with children, we can begin to positively impact the future leaders of in this world. Next, please. Okay, I mentioned at the beginning that mm -hmm. our project is holistic and we cannot do only one of these things and be successful. As I said, the basis of our work mm -hmm. is education, raising awareness, in the children at a very young age, and then through these ways. One of them is presentation and workshop. We have been doing that thousands of times in different schools, especially with Los Angeles uh, School District, mm -hmm. LAUSD, which is the second largest schools in the country after New York. So what we do in there, mm -hmm. we go to these schools and teach the parents, teachers, and children different ways. We talk to the children the same, not the same way we talk to adults about violence and gun violence and how we can be peaceful. And then we have petitions which we produce. We just give them different educational, after talking to them, we also give them a lot of educational material that we read. And our educational material is in Farsi, English, Spanish, uh, and uh, Korean, even Korean, Armenian. So people can read and learn more. And we have some in slides that we show later is like a photos of these places that we go. And the second thing is influencing lawmakers or policymakers to changing the policy. I personally do not 
believe as much in policy, although I believe in it, and I, that's why we're doing it, but as their effectiveness, because when, for instance, we had, um, I, I discussed that a little later, when Clinton came to power, they banned semi-automatic gun, when I was studying my work too, for 10, 10 years. So there was ban or semi-automatic gun. When Bush came to power immediately, change that. So policy is very good, but we can do it. It's wonderful, but it, again, because depending to who is coming in power, that can change easily. So that, that is not very permanent. We have to make it permanent anyway. Then we, we talk about you know, the laws that we have either passed or helped pass. Then the next one is influencing toy manufacturers and the store. The toy manufacturers, we talk to them in letter writing campaigns and tell them to please remove or do not buy or do not, or do not sell something which is dangerous for kids like violence, video games, and also the toy gun. And the, the petition I mentioned, and then it goes to billboards. Do you, we have been putting billboards on different parts of, especially in LA, and we would show you some photos about that. And then PSA is public service announcement. We have had that for over 20 years, uh, having in KRRN, 670 AM radio, and some of them, if you are in LA, you have heard that all the time. We have different kind of PSA that we just, hopefully if we can show it to today, one of them, otherwise I can mention what that is. And that is very powerful because people, which I don't even know, they call or when they see me, they say, oh my God, that is so helpful. I was going to buy a toy gun or a violence video game for my children. And I remember, oh, I heard that lady said something in the PSA that you shouldn't buy it. So that have been very effective. After that would be the media coverage. The media coverage have been really help, helping us. We have had hundreds and hundreds of media coverage in different media, hopefully when we get to one of our slides, we can show you that. So I don't talk about it uh, here. And then events, in the events, what we do is we ask the kids, after we teach them at the presentation, we, not, we say one day we, as a peace day. So that, that peace day would not mm -hmm. be in the schools. This event would not be in the school because we don't want to give mixed message to the kids saying, oh, don't, you don't have to have toy gun, toy gun is bad for you. And next day say, okay, bring your toy gun in the school and we give you some, you know, uh, t-shirts or whatever. So the event, in the events, the kids after being educated, bring their toy gun and their video game willingly. They give it back to us, but we put it in a board that we, I'll show you in the, some slides later. And then they create some beautiful art piece which say, send no to toy gun and toy weapon. They get t-shirts for their participation and they get a certificate, which both of them is educational. Anything we do is educational. And then we have uh, art exhibition. All these toy gun that we have collected, which is more than 30, 40,000, we have given to different artists and the artists have created the ASM. We don't want it to be beautiful. The only thing we ask them to do to have a message, message of non against gun and war and uh, violence. Next, please. Likewise, I said in the lower part, you see a uh, student in school, and then you see on the top, you, you some of you know, maybe know James Hahn is, uh, was our mayor for many years in the LA. He came to our, many of our, you know, uh, events. And this is one of those that he came and encouraged people and the kids to do that. On the top right, there is a gentleman sitting, is Senator Polanco. He came to our event and then also a gen gentleman in the left. I'm, I'm having my presentation there. And the person sitting in the left-hand side is Director of Housing Authority of City of LA, which they bust in thousands of kids from, for instance, East LA, which was a very poor area, and brought them to our project. And they all give their toy gun away, which I had so much toy gun, I didn't know what to do with it then. So, you know, next please. And even the one you see is, a, you, you see more. We said influencing policymakers. As you see in the left-hand side in top, it is a, one of our ordinances, I believe it was uh, for the 
safe storage of guns at home. As you see, Eric Garcetti, which is our mayor now, is going to change soon. Uh, he's there and I'm there with other groups that we have been helping pass this thing. In the right hand side, Mr. Garcetti and I, and then on the lower part left, it was a, I believe she was the uh, old mayor of Burbank. And this is one of our you know, events in the Burbank area. And the right hand side, I have another council member, which we were doing something again about, I think, um, some bills to pass, and I don't remember his name now. <laughs> anyway, next slide, please. Okay, here again, you know Adam Schiff, probably those who live in LA or California know Adam Schiff, and he is with us in uh, one of our events, and with us and it's really good. And you know the uh, this lady, uh, Gabby Gifford, mm -hmm. and he was she was shot. Well, she's a con congresswoman. She was shot, and she was really badly injured in the head. And as we speak, she still cannot talk very well. And she is one of the advocates for gun control uh, right now. In the lower hand side is a uh, gentleman Kevin De Leon. And he was a senator, which is right now is running for mayor of uh, LA. And then again, another one, another councilman, uh, which is, we are in another event with Sam. Next, please. Now, the big topic is NRA collusion. NRA is, as you all know, National Rifle Association and they are the cause, now we can go back yet. They are the cause of all these issues we have. They are, and beside with gun lobby and gun manufacturers, they spend a lot of money to buy our politicians. And those politicians who have bought by them, they have some dues to them, they have to pay them back somehow. So they would be fighting us back when we talk about any kind of gun control measures and they would not they would like it the other way around so as example the nra still continues to give million of dollars to campaign to politician he give money to movie theaters to put guns in their uh, you know uh, movies and spend 55 million dollar in 2016 election which 30 million of that for trump trump campaign next please Policy of NRA reaction. This is the policies that we have helped pass or did pass. And one of them is toy gun ban, which was in New York and California. The one in New York, I was not in New York, but they knew about our project. So they called me and they wanted me to go and testify in front of the council members in order to pass their toy gun ban or, you know. So I just went for only, only 24 hours uh, red eye and went there I only did my presentation and came back and that thankfully that toy gun ban passed and they were saying and they wrote in the newspapers everything that we were very helpful in passing that and we did that with Senator De Leon in uh, California. The background check HR8 you know we, we are hearing that back and forth this background check I don't know why for instance NRA would not like to have background check. You're not saying don't have gun. You're saying have gun, let's have the background check now. What is wrong with that? 90% of people in this country want the background check, but we still are in the situation we are going back and forth that, you know, hopefully one day we can get it totally done. Then it's assault weapon ban. If you remember, I mentioned that to you that when Clinton came, assault weapon was banned for 10 years, but again, it came back now back and forth we were going. But what I, what I don't understand is why when assault weapon is something, is a war, is a war gun, it's not, you know, for civilian. I believe even armies shouldn't have that because why do you want to kill even your enemy so bad that you would make him, you know, hole in their body? Beside that, but I'm saying why a person who wants to defend, supposedly defend themselves, why do they want to have, you know, assault weapon, why do you want to have semi-automatic? And 
ironically, no, no, I may hopefully I remember to talk about this later uh, with the one good bill is passing from house so far. And that's related to that too. And then we had ban of high capacity magazine because there are magazines which take up to hundred or more bullets in them. So we are saying, okay, if you have a gun, at least have low capacity magazine. magazine. Why you wanna have hundred in them? If you wanna defend yourself from a thief, you know, you need one or two. Why do you want a hundred? Child trigger lock. Another thing that NRA also was going back and forth, not wanting that. I don't know why, if you have gun, why not have trigger lock? Ghost guns, I'm sure you have heard that. Ghost guns are the guns that have been, uh, easily can be assembled. They, you can do it by computer. Anybody who knows computer, even a five-year-old kid, they can go and buy, purchase the parts of these guns and they can assemble it. So that's why they call it ghost gun. So this is very dangerous for this country and because they, they don't have any serial number, there is no background check, there is no way that the police can trace it. So people can, the criminal, this is the, the criminal have love affair with ghost guns because they cannot be traced. So that is another very important thing we have. Minimum age to purchase gun, as I said, is 21 for handgun and 18 for um, shotgun, which just yesterday, this bill after Uvalde and uh, the you know problem happened in uh, New York, then they, we passed something only from the actually only from House. House passed it. Still has to go to Senate, and hopefully we can bombard Senate uh, by our calls and pushing them to sign this bill, which is a little better than nothing. I don't think it's a perfect thing, but it's better than nothing. Safe storage gun at home. Again, we, we need to have some laws and we try to do that. And maybe one of those photos you see was that storage of gun at home because many kids find their guns at home, which is not secured. It's not in the, you know, some boxes with the log and it is not unloaded. Next please. Okay, we didn't study our uh, organization in, and was, this was presented in American Public Association annual meeting in 2016. We gathered a study that kids under six, under six years old, babies. And we call this US infant, toddler and preschoolers in the line of fire. Next please. And we find out that you see in the very low hand part of this um, chart, 379 kids, remember again, kids under six years old. It was incidents with those kids. And we think that the kids being very young cannot pull the trigger, but it's not true. We saw the 238, the one on the top, was the shooter were kids under six year old. So these people, these kids who either killed or shot their mom, dad themselves, and one of them, two of them was really heartbreaking that these little kids, like three years old, two of them was three years old, they pushed, put the trigger, because they don't know, they, they are curious, babies. They, I don't know how they could even handle it. Get the gun and they were looking at the barrels and they have shoot themselves. They can imagine the head, the brain, what happened to them. Next, please. And this is one, we have a lot more to show, but only show this one. As you see, the majority of these things happen in the home. These guns were in the home, in their own home or the parents' home, but majority of these shootings happen in home. And so you see the shooters being the blue one and the, the victims were more. Next, please. Okay, so many people unfortunately feel that having a gun, gun at home, it is better for them and make them safe. And this is totally opposite. As you see here, the risk of people keeping gun at home, rate of homicide would be 200% more and suicide would increase by 400 times. And this is very obvious why. When people are 
angry at each other, husband and wife, you know, friends. When they have gone in the home, at the time that they are in the rage, in a very bad shape, what they do, they know where the gun is, go and shoot the person. Maybe if, if they take another hour or two, they would change their mind. But the worst thing is with suicide. The reason is so much higher is in the suicide, especially in the homes that they have kids and young kids or like, you know, teenager. As you know, teenager are having their hormones up and down and they have issues with their girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, mom and dad, your school, like having bad grades, whatever. They, they have guns at home. Instead of thinking, what am I going to do now? Go do it this way, kill myself that way. When they have gun, so they just go get the gun and shoot themselves. Next, please. Remember I was telling you about billboards, so I passed this quickly because actually, you know, you see what our billboard, which one this year, 2000, we had 10 of them on the, you know, and it was with the help of Senator Polanco. So as you see, say only toy, toy gun kills and underneath we have websites. So people get curious, what does that mean toy gun kills? So they go and see what we do. Next, please. Yeah, this is another one in different part of Los Angeles. Next, please. Oh, by the way, I have to say something here. Can you go back, please? Okay, with, with that billboard, we got a lot of oh, okay, NRA and gun lobby, especially NRA, start being very mean to us. When we had that, we didn't know where they saw it, but we had a lot of phone calls and even writing to us that, who are you? Why are you doing that? It's not your business what we want to do. Why you want to get our guns away from us? So I got in big trouble for this one and another one, which I've mentioned later. Next, please. So we are saying this all the time in our PSA. I don't think we could see our PSA here because it was not, it's not okay to, I mean, I don't see it now. So guns, we say guns are for killing, toys are for playing. The combination of these two is deadly. Next, please. I think we saw that. Okay, this is the LA Times when in 1996, when we were only two years old, our organization, we were going to different schools and different events. So one of these LA Times uh, journalists find out about it and came to our house and said, wanna take a photo of this. And this LA Times came, can you also please show me the website? Can you click on it and go to the, our website? Thank you. Anyway, this is another LA Times. When LA Times came out, this is another place that I got in trouble again, very badly. They somehow find out that I was also Iranian. So they were telling me that, you know, why are you doing this? Who are you? Go back to your own country. If you are right, do something about that violence where you want to get our guns and stuff like this. And of course, I get a very good uh, results of that too. Many people would call and say, oh, you're like a, um, flower in the dumps and stuff like that. But lots of people, and a few at least not, few NRA called and they were not happy with us. Now, when I was in media, that LA Times, I want uh, Dr. Gamsani to show us this too, because this shows the media. If you remember, we said we are very close with the media and media really is uh, helping us a lot because we have been in, in very many of these different TV stations. They have been Spanish, Armenian, Iranian, American, you name it. So we have been guest speaker and also when I'm talking in the schools, we see that. This is some of the videos and audios. It's not all of them are here, but much more than that. And you can also show the articles if you can, please. So we have lots of articles also came in different languages talking about what our project is. And so that, that is the way that we have raised awareness. You can go lower, please. We can raise awareness about gun violence in this country. The whole reason of our uh, project is education and raising awareness. So through media, we have been very, very successful. Some people call from different countries, like South Africa, and they told me that, oh, we wanted to follow you and you wanted to do the same Thing that you did and I was wondering where did you hear and they say okay from this media that media which is a lot and, uh, and this is more and more you can go to our next slide 
on the disease. Dr. Kiyomer, uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, you have to come to an end uh, pretty soon because your time is uh, way over. But since it was very, very interesting, uh, I just let you go. But can you please use five minutes and, and finish it up? I try very quickly. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, but uh, where's the slides? Because I have to see slides. Okay, if you can go lower, I can go quickly. No, that's lower, much lower. Um, okay, this is our ev event. As you see, you know, the kids come in, we give them a t-shirt, we say, send no to toy gun, toy weapon. And also they pose with this sign that we have, and we have a thousands of people, thank you, next, next, you just can go next, next I can talk, and we say it's not the toy gun exchange, but we say toy gun kill, but look at this, I want you to look at this and tell me which one you think is real, but and next please. If you guess, can you go one more time back? If you guess number four was right, then you were right, but I cannot really see the difference. Can you go next one too? And this one, we don't know which one is real gun. Next one, you see what is the real one. Six, and now again, we can go more. And then NRA and other groups start making the guns which looks like a toy gun. And next, please. And this is replacing violence with art. We can go to next one. Maybe we can see that one. This is the, um, we have one, project called Replacing Violence with Art or Art Gallery. You know, since we don't have time, can you go to the next one? Maybe you can. Organization is part of ICANN, which is International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapon, which won the first, I mean, won in 2017, won the Nobel Peace Prize. And this is the Nobel, the prize that is in this gentleman's hand is the Nobel Peace Prize. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to uh, Vienna this 17 of this month, next, next week, to participate in first uh, state party celebrating and trying to get everybody to participate, all the different countries, more than 100 government would be there. And I want you to know that nuclear yeah. weapons right now are now illegal, although we have uh, 14,500 uh, you know, nuclear weapon in the world, 90% of them in US and in uh, Russia. But, and of course the nine countries which have nuclear weapon did not participate and don't believe in that, uh, it's what, what we are doing. But right now by international law, nuclear weapon are illegal. Hopefully we can really get them to be joining us and we have a nuclear free, gun free world and peaceful world. I think I don't have time. Thank you. Thank you so much.